So, I just finished the premium course, my friends. And if you want to get notified when this thing airs, make sure to hit the subscribe button down here. It's very hot outside. I'm eating my popsicle right here. And today I'm going to be showing you how to do a wireframe render. So you've been learning 3D, you created an amazing model, and uh, you I even have like a very nice render to present it. Well, one of the things that you should have is also a wireframe render. Recruiters, studios, they love to see how you tackle complex topology things like this controller right here. And I'm going to be showing you two techniques that you can use to get this wireframe renders. The first one is very, very simple. I'm going to grab the whole thing right here. I'm going to control, well, actually, yeah, let's grab the whole thing. There we go. I'm going to control G and I'm going to duplicate the whole group so that we have two different copies and we can check the materials on uh, this second copy right here. I'm literally just going to say right click, assign a new material, and we're going to go to Arnold and AI wireframe. Instead of Maya, we have this very cool thing where you can literally just render the wireframe of your controller. However, there are a couple of things that you want to like modify to make sure that you get the best result. First of all, as you can see, we get a very subdivided wireframe because what it does is it gives the subdivision modifier to the whole thing or the subdivision surface, and then it triangulates everything. So this is very difficult to read, not very useful. If you go to the properties here on the AI wireframe render, one of the things that we can do is first of all, change this to polygons. And by doing that, we'll still going to get like a really, really dense mesh, which is a lot better, a lot more readable but still not the best idea. So unfortunately, we cannot get a soft effect here without having to go lower on our subdivision level. So I'm going to press number one. And if we press number one, we go back to like normal mode. When we run there, we're actually going to be getting the like low poly version of our character. So how could we get like an intermediate version? In this particular case, I would recommend smoothing the object. So I'm going to go to uh, modeling mesh and just hit smooth. And by doing this, we're going to give it just one subdivision, not two, just one. So usually when you press number three, you're giving this three or two subdivisions. That's why it looks very, very dense. But in this case, with just one subdivision, we're going to get something that looks a lot cleaner, a lot rounder, and in general, it gives us a very nice effect here for our elements. So you look at this in the portfolio, you see this, and you're like, yeah, this looks cool. Could some topology things here and there be improved? Of course, but in general, this is going to give you a very nice effect. However, it looks kind of boring. So I like this method, just the AI wireframe. I mean, it's a good method to get something here fast, but I like it even more when you can see the underlying like shading of your element. So here's how you do it. I'm going to uh, hide this one again. Let's bring the older one and let's go to the controller only. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm only going to be doing this for the controller, but you can do this for every single piece. Um, ideally, we would have a material. In this case, each specific element has a material. That's why I need to do this pretty much individually. So if we take a look at this material and we map it out, you're going to see that we have this um, like GameCube controller render is just like a purple material. We're going to be using something called an AI standard or sorry, AI layer shader. Oh, let's go back here. There we go. So I'm going to press tab and I'm going to look for AI layer shader. And the layer shader is a very cool shader that we can use to combine multiple shaders. So if we grab with middle mouse our wireframe render right here, you can see that here we can enable two layers. The first layer is going to be, I'm just going to middle mouse and drag this into the input right here. The first layer is going to be our purple, sorry, our purple layer. And the secondary layer is going to be our wireframe render. So this wireframe render right here is going to go here onto the input. So by doing this, what we're pretty much selling um, the engine, in this case, Arnold, is that we want to render one thing on top of the other. Right now, we're not seeing anything. And the reason why that is, is because here on the second input, we need to bring the mix down. So actually, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the reason why we're not seeing anything is because I did not assign the material. So assign existing material and AI layer shader. There we go. So now when we render, as you can see, we're going to be back onto our original um, like wireframe effect right here. We can blend it, which is a really cool thing right here. Like we can actually bring the mix down. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us half of one material and half of the other, which as you can see, gives us an interesting result. But in this case, what I actually want to do is I want to use this color right here as a mask. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to grab my control and I'm going to give it one subdivision. That's what we did before. So just one single smooth subdivision right here. And I'm going to disconnect this from the input. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use this out color or the information of the out color as a mask of the mix node. Because remember, a mix node is just a zero, which is black or white, right? So in this case, if I uh, middle mouse drag this into the mix, it's going to I'm going to get the connection editor and I can say, hey, give me the out color R of the like wireframe thing and use this for the mix of the second element. So mix two, I'm going to get OK. 
So as you can see right here, we get this very interesting effect. Now, if we grab any other shader, let's say I'm gonna uh, bring another like AI standard surface. And let's say this is gonna be just like a flat, like white shader. So just increase the roughness. And this one's gonna go, of course, to the input of the second layer. If we do this and we render, what's gonna happen? Well, I hate when this happens. There we go. What should happen here is we should be able to use the wireframe render as a mask. And in this case, we're seeing like the lines, as you can see, they're masking out the color. So what we wanna do is, of course, we wanna invert this effect. What's the best way to invert the effect? There's actually a couple of options. One of the easiest one is just go to the wireframe and change the, the line color to white and the field color to black. And as you can see, this is gonna give us the mask that we're going for. And when we render, this is what we're gonna get. So now we have the wireframe on top of the object and it looks very nice. You wanna go fancy? We can go fancy. We can go to the wireframe right here and uh, change this to, let's say, a metallic. This is gonna be a metallic gold color. So if we go for like a, like a gold color right here and we like lower the roughness a little bit, when we render, we're gonna get this very interesting like golden wireframe render of our thing. So this is how you can get fancy and this wireframe render looks a little bit better than the other one. I wouldn't do the golden one for a portfolio to be honest, but it's a good way to generate something that looks interesting. So that's it my friends, quick tip today. Hopefully you like it, let me know in the comments and if you're waiting for the new course, let me know down here. We're gonna be sharing some um, spoilers and some like uh, sneak peeks on the Discord channel. So make sure to join, make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell icon and help us get to the next level. Thank you very much, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one.